calling and sending for God's mission. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to chapter 4 verse 13, Isaiah chapter 40 verses 11 to 19, and Acts chapter 10 verses 9 to 18. Introduction. When I was hooked on drugs for 12 years, it was hard. Even my ministry and relationship with God got affected. It came to a point that I volunteered myself to enter a rehabilitation center and I need to undergo a six months program. From there, I learned how to lead a Bible study and I realized that God is calling me. By His grace, I finished the course and I enrolled in a Bible school and also finished a four year course. Now, God is using my life as a living testimony and He keeps on sending me to share His words to those who are lost. Last week, Joseph died, all his brothers, and all that generation. But the children of Israel multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty that caused the new king of Egypt to fear. This new king had no idea about Joseph. Because of the fast growth of the Israelites, the king commanded the two Hebrew midwives Shifra and Pua to kill every son who is born but the midwives feared God and did not do as the king commanded them. Moshe from the tribe of Levi was born and his parents hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him, she put Moshe inside the basket and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. That time, the daughter of Pharaoh was taking a bath at the river and she found Moshe. She had compassion on him and treated him as her own. When the new king of Egypt died, the children of Israel cried because of the hardship, and their cry came up to God and he remembered his covenant with the patriarchs and he acknowledged them. Our Torah portion starts with Moshe tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro. He led the flock to the back of the desert, and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Here we can already see that God had a wonderful plan for Moshe as he will call him for a very important mission. The reason why God called him is because Moshe was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deeds, Acts chapter 7 verse 22. So, how did God call Moshe for a mission? 1. The angel of God appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush, verse 2. Why must the angel appear in a flame of fire? My understanding here is first to call the attention of Moshe. Since he was busy shepherding the flock of Jethro, God wants Moshe to notice his calling immediately. If God is calling us, do not pretend or reason out because it is a privilege and honor to serve the only king and creator of the heavens and the earth. Second, fire pictures, refining and purification. Malachi chapter 3 verse 3, says, He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering of righteousness. Step by step, God refines and purifies Moshe for he will deliver the people of Israel from slavery. 2. He called Moshe by name, verse 4, in Genesis chapter 22 verse 11, God called Abraham's name twice. Also in Genesis chapter 46 verse 2, he calls the name of Jacob twice. Here, God called Moshe's name twice too. Why? Because God will promote him from being a shepherd of Jethro's flock to the flock of God, the children of Israel. 3. He told Moshe to remove his sandals, verse 5, why? I believe since God is calling Moshe for a very important mission, he is showing Moshe the difference between holy and unholy. Eventually, he will receive the two tablets Torah, on Mount Sinai containing the holy and unholy things, forbidden and unforbidden and he will teach it to the nation of Israel. 4. He introduced himself to Moshe as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, verse 6. This is how God introduced himself to Moshe because he is a covenant God and he has remembered his people. Upon introducing himself means he will begin to take action, to visit his people in Egypt and to bring them out there, Genesis chapter 50 verse 24. God also told Moshe his name is, I am who I am, or Ihya Asher Ihya in Hebrew which means, I will be what I will be, as he identifies himself with being himself. Moreover he told Moshe to say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. The phrase I am means he always exists, he is always present for his people. Interestingly, Yeshua said in John chapter 8 verse 58, Before Abraham was, I am. 
Baruch Hashem, after God called Moshe for a mission, he will now send him to the land of Egypt. Verse 10 says, Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Upon sending Moshe, God assured him of the following, 1. He will certainly be with Moshe, verse 12. The Hebrew word for I will is, Haya, which means, to abide, to remain, so God will not leave Moshe. What a wonderful encouragement. 2. He will perform miraculous signs through Moshe, chapter 4 verses 1 to 9. In verse 2, God asked Moshe, what is that in your hand? And Moshe said, a rod. The Hebrew word for rod is matte which means, staff, branch, tribe. To perform miraculous signs, God will use the rod of Moshe for Pharaoh to free the tribes of Israel. 3. He will be Moshe's mouth, verse 12. We can see here that God will not only use Moshe to deliver his people from bondage, but as a prophet as well. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verses 10 to 12, but since then there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moshe, whom the Lord knew face to face, in all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, before Pharaoh, before all his servants, and in all his land, and by all that mighty power and all the great terror which Moshe performed in the sight of all Israel. Our Torah portion is a reminder to us that God is calling and sending people according to his purpose. Our Haftarah portion is about the comfort of God to his people Israel. Verse 1 says, Comfort yes, comfort my people. Speak comfort to Jerusalem, and cry out to her, that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Going to verse 11 which is the start of our Haftarah, it says, He will feed his flock like a shepherd, he will gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and gently led those who are with young. So to comfort Israel, there will be a calling and gathering of the children of Israel from living in the Galat land of our exile. Our apostolic portion deals with the vision of Peter which many used as an excuse to eat anything they want. In other words, it is one of the misinterpreted verses in the apostolic writings. For a better understanding and to avoid being out of context, let us go back to the following verses, Matthew chapter 10 verses 5 and 6. These twelve Yeshua sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Here, the main focus of the disciples in preaching the gospel should be their Jewish brothers. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now here, not only the Jewish people should be reached by the gospel, but also the Gentiles, end of the earth. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. And I, Yeshua, will give you, Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What is this key that Yeshua gave to Peter all about? Let's now proceed to the vision of Peter in Acts chapter 10. In his vision it says that there were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air, verse 12. Then Peter heard a voice saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat, but he replied, Not so Lord. For I have never eaten anything common or unclean. It shows that even in vision, Peter is not eating unclean food, Please read Leviticus 11, so how much more in real life? In verses 17 to 23, while Peter was wondering about the meaning of his vision, the men of Cornelius, a centurion Italian regiment, in other words a Gentile, came to his house but they only stood before the gate. These men invited Peter to go to the house of Cornelius for he was instructed by a holy angel of God to meet Peter, verses 1 to 8. But there was a problem here. Since part of the traditions of the Jews are also known as the oral law as Jews are forbidden to have fellowship with non-Jewish because they treated them as unclean. The question is, how could Peter meet Cornelius? The answer is in verse 28 where Peter said, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. 
Now Peter understood the meaning of his vision. Remember God told him to kill and eat meaning he must kill his pride of being a Jew and eat means to accept Cornelius as Gentile. Peter has been called by God and sent him to Cornelius. That's why Yeshua gave him a key to open a door and be an avenue of salvation for the Gentiles. So the context of our apostolic portion is not about food, it's about the relationship of the Jew and Gentile that there should have no dividing wall. For both have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3 verse 23, but through the blood of Messiah Yeshua, he reconciled them both to God and gave access by one spirit to the Father, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 14 to 18. Hallelujah. The connection of our parasha is about the calling of God and how he sends people for a mission. In Torah, God called Moshe and sent him to Egypt to deliver his people Israel from bondage. In Haftarah, to comfort his people, God will call and gather Israel from exile. In Apostolic, God called Peter through a vision and sent him to Cornelius as a key to open the door for the salvation of the Gentiles. Back to my introduction, from the slavery of drugs, God changed me and called me to serve him. The task is not easy. But just like the promise of God to Moshe, he is with me. If God is calling you now, say, here I am, because serving him is therefore an awesome privilege. Don't take it for granted. It is given. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 24, Only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. Shabbat Shalom.